Hi, I'm Tom Miggett from Tom Miggett Photography. Last weekend I was hosting a workshop in the Trozac region here in Scotland and one of my students approached me and asked me a question about Lightroom and its workflow. And as I was answering him, I realized that his question was a very good one and worthy of a video for you guys. So here it is. His question was uh, about his workflow. So he would take a photo with whatever camera brand that he has, uh, would look at the back of his camera on the LCD screen and see a great photograph with great colors, punchy colors, very contrasted, a, a nice shot, really. Goes home, import his photo onto his computer using Lightroom, and the picture for a few seconds appears as. Uh, as seen uh, from the back of his camera, but suddenly after a few seconds something happens in Lightroom and all the colors and contrast fade away, leaving a rather blunt uh, photograph instead. So his question was whether or not there was something wrong with Lightroom. The easy answer is no, there is nothing wrong with Lightroom and I should also mention that he's shooting RAW and that is important. So what happened? And well, in order to answer the what happened question, you need to understand what the RAW format is. A couple of years ago, I did a video explaining the differences between the RAW, JPEG and TIFF format. If you haven't watched that video, I invite you to click on the link right now. Uh, and beside the format itself, the, uh, I, in that video I explain what happens when the shot is being made and what is being recorded. With regard to the RAW format, you need to understand that you have all the information about your image. It's really like a digital negative, but you also have all the uh, information that are stored as metadata. Uh, such information would be the focus point, uh, would also be the white balance, would be the camera model used, the exposure setting, ISO, shutter, aperture, whether or not you use the flash, whether the lens correction inside your camera has been enabled, uh, whether you use uh, noise reduction, whether um, and picture style and whatnot. It's very specific to uh, your camera model and brand. Uh, another thing that you also have inside the RAW file is a JPEG. Yes, a JPEG, even though you may have set up your camera to do to record RAW only. There is always a JPEG inside your RAW file. And the simple reason for it is if you didn't have one, you wouldn't be able to preview uh, your resulting image at the back of your camera. That's the very reason why you have that. It's very handy. That very JPEG is an interpretation of the image data. That interpretation is made by your camera and more precisely by the picture style or uh, setting in your camera. So you'll notice uh, it may have a different name according to your uh, camera model, uh, but for Canon it's called picture style. And you have different options such as landscape, portrait, monochrome and others. And those predefined profile can also be customized so you can increase the saturation, contrast and whatnot. So those have no impact whatsoever with regard to the RAW format. Uh, it will only have an impact when you export JPEG or has an impact on the JPEG inside your RAW file. Uh, and so the uh, resulting image that you see at the back of your camera being that JPEG is really the clear uh, and direct result of your picture style that you've chosen in your camera menu. When you import your uh, images as RAW file into your computer, onto your computer using um, Lightroom or Photoshop, it doesn't really matter because it's the same camera RAW engine for both. Uh, what happens is Adobe Lightroom, or camera RAW more precisely, uh, will use most of the uh, or the most important metadata inside that RAW file, but will discard most of the others. Uh, so, for example, Adobe Lightroom or Camera Row will not be interested in the focus point information, will not care for the picture style, will not care for whether or not you enable uh, the noise reduction, whether or not you had set the lens correction, 
uh, and all the other fancy specific camera uh, setting, those will not be um, read or used by Lightroom. It will, uh, Lightroom will uh, use the image information itself, will uh, use the white balance setting that you used and your camera settings as well as your copyright uh, settings. Those are the only information that are being used by Lightroom. And in fact, when you go to Lightroom, let's go in Lightroom right now. Uh, and if I just pick one uh, photograph, so let me just pick one, I don't know, um, really, uh, let's, let's take this one, here we go. If we take this one, uh, you'll see here details in the library module uh, and in this panel metadata you will see all the details such as the uh, copyright setting uh, and the camera used, the exposure settings and the lens details and the flash. That's about it. Everything that you see in this panel, that's all that's being read from the camera, uh, from the RAW file um, itself. All the other points, all the other metadata are being discarded. If you're interested in having those metadata, well, you can always use your um, camera manufacturer uh, software and it will use um, those uh, metadata. So back to the image rendition. So you import your image, Lightroom sees the raw file and will uh, interpret that raw file and give you the resulting uh, photograph according to its own interpretation of that photograph. But at first, what it does when you import your image, it shows a preview of your image. And that preview is the JPEG that you have inside your raw file. So that's the reason why after a few seconds, once Lightroom has Lightroom or Camaro has finished interpreting the uh, image data, that image changes in, into a um, image according to Adobe's own interpretation of the uh, image data. But nothing is lost, everything is there. It's just an interpretation. So it's just a matter of how I want my green to be green versus red or yellow, but you can find all this. So that being said, is there a way to um, revert, uh, get your image to look exactly the same as the one you saw at the back of your camera? Well, yes, there is, and I'm gonna show you in a minute. So. First thing first, I'm going to a test folder right here that's empty, and I'm going to re-import my memory card. I'm closing this, closing that, and let me do an import. As you may have seen yesterday, I've published a few uh, photographs that I've actually shot yesterday morning in the Pentland Hills on the outskirts of Edinburgh. Uh, so I'm just going to select a few of those. So let me let me select. Yeah, four should be enough. One, two, three, four. Let that and here and I'm not doing anything during the import and it's going to be a previous um, a build preview of one one fair enough and it's going to the test folder this is it so we're in a test folder we're going to see the image popping up in a second and pay attention to the tone of the images you're going to see in a second they're changing the tones are changing it's very very quick so you might not see it here you should see it in a second right here you see it just changed this one is going to change as well here we go so if I open this image right now this one is not matching exactly what I saw at the back of my camera that was totally different so how can I go to that version which I liked initially uh, and why do I like it well one thing before I show you well what the solution is when you choose a camera, when I, the reason you guys know that I use Canon, um, and I use Canon because I like the features that the camera um, comes with, but also about the picture quality. I'm not saying that Nikon's picture quality is not good. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the interpretation of the image data. I like the way Canon sees color, the way it renders color, the way it interprets color. So why would I want to have Adobe own interpretation of the image data instead of the one that I like personally uh, from Canon. And that's the reason why I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to get the Adobe own interpretation. And to do so, you need to go to the develop module. 
And in the develop module, there is a panel on the right, the last one, and it's called camera calibration. And it's about camera profile. And what you can see here, the value for this um, image here is Adobe Standard. That's the that's the default value that you get when you import your image uh, in uh, Camera Row. Well, look what happens when I click here. I can see Camera, Faceful, Landscape, Neutral, Portrait, Standard. Does that remind you something? Well, that is actually matching your picture profile, your picture style in Canon terms. And so I remember shooting yesterday using the picture style landscape profile. So here now, if I select the camera landscape, look what happens. You see the colors, how they're more vivid and more contrast. There's more contrast in the, in the frame. Look at this. I'm going back. This is Adobe's own interpretation. This is Canon. So this is how I saw the image at the back of my camera. This is what I personally would like to start with. Uh, to start from when I'm going to edit uh, in um, Lightroom or Photoshop. Um, so how can you do that? Because it's very tedious. If, if ev for every image you need to go here in the camera calibration and change it, well, no, there is a better way. The better way is you create a preset. So if you create a preset, you click on the plus here on the left side, preset, and you're going to select what you want in your preset. Personally, I want the lens correction to be uh, applied. That's the lens correction made in by Lightroom, not the one inside your camera, if your camera allows you to do that. So that's the, I want this to be enabled. And I also want to have the calibration. Then you come up with a name and you save it. I personally already have one. It's called Lens Correction Canon Camera, uh, camera Profile Landscape. So when you import an image, and to show it to you, to prove it, so this is, the um, 341, uh, the reference of the image. So if I'm going back to the library now and I'm going to import, so I need to reinsert, going here, and 341. So let me pick 342. So uncheck all and I'm going to select this one. And now the develop setting here on the right, instead of none, I'm going to my favorite and select lens correction, Canon camera profile landscape. Select this, nothing else, and I'm importing it. And it should appear right here in a second. And you see it's loading it and it's interpreting the, the data, the image data using the profile that I set up in my preset so now if I'm going to develop module, you can see it's the camera landscape by default and the lens correction has already been enabled. If I wanted the Adobe one, that would be it. But personally, I'd rather start with a full color uh, and punchy image. So this is it. You know, using Lightroom, you're using Camera Raw in Photoshop. Well, let's say I'm going in over here. I need to re-inject the uh, memory card. I do open and let me select, I need to go, we did 41, 42, let's do 43. I'll open it. Now, this is the image according to Adobe standard, right? So here you have on the right side, you have a, a logo of a camera, an icon of a camera. If you click on it, it's the camera calibration panel. And you can see here the profile uses Adobe Standard. Well, if you actually select Camera Landscape, now you're back to that image. So this is it. I hope you found that informative. I hope it was clear enough uh, what happens uh, in Lightroom, why your image or your images are being changed automatically uh, when they're being rendered inside Lightroom or in Camera Row. And you understood now how to do to um, get the image that you want uh, rendered according to your own camera profile. So until next time, this is Tom Miggott saying, if you like it, well, capture it and make sure you use the camera calibration profile that you want. Ciao.